Hi, great to see you again. We have been talking about this very important question of life and its limited nature that sooner or later this will be terminated. And if we live longer than essential lifespan of our species, which is 45 years, if we live longer than that, then we will face also this period of aging where old age comes in and a lot of things go wrong with the body. Some things like brain functioning become better also. But these things are going wrong or we are becoming old and more chances of sickness and death, not because there are bad genes in the body, not because there are geronto genes or aging genes which are causing that. It is because our survival genes, the genes which keep us alive, are not working properly. And why don't they work properly? Now that is the biggest paradox of life. So in order to understand old age and eventual death or our inability to survive, we have to understand why do we live anyway? Yeah, because the things which keep us alive without which we cannot live are the same things which kill us. We cannot live without oxygen without proper utilization of our breathing abilities and our breathing style. Oxygen is the basis of life, but oxygen is also the basis of death. Because whenever I breathe, I produce lots of these free radicals or other reactive oxygen species, which create so much trouble in the body. It's actually a miracle that I live with so much damage happening. So oxygen, which is the basis of life, is the basis of death. Food, as soon as we eat food, a lot of things in the food, especially sugars, glucose, etc., how much damage they create immediately in the body. There are books and books written and thousands of papers written about the effects of oxygen, glucose, how it causes damage in the body. Basic biochemistry. Yeah, how the DNA is duplicated, how proteins are made, how carbon is utilized, how, uh, what happens during breathing, what happens during exercise. All these biochemical reactions make lots of mistakes, errors. There is no perfect system. These errors are all the time being made. When I go out in the sun, the sunlight hits my DNA and then it has to repair and it makes errors. That error, if it's not taken care of, might result into cancer 30 years later. So it's almost amazing that we live, that there is so much damage and still we live. This paradox is resolved by the fact that living systems have matching defense mechanisms. For anything which goes wrong, there is a process in the cell which tries to neutralize the damage. For free radicals, our bodies have hundreds of types of antioxidants which take care of the damage. For DNA breaks, there are DNA repair systems. There is protein turnover. Yeah, there is protein repair. There is immune system. There is thermoregulation system. So from right down from inside the cell to highest level, which also in our case will include our social relationships, our mental powers. These are the processes of maintenance and repair. If these processes were not there, a newly born child cannot live even for two minutes. And that is the difference between a living system and a non-living system. If I scratch a table or something and make a scratch on that, it cannot heal itself. A table is a dead wood yeah? or a stone or something else, non-living. But a living system, when a child falls or cracks or even adults, we can heal our bones, we repair our skin, we take care of all the things. And these are very, very dynamic processes. They are working all the time. In old biological texts, we used to use the word homeostasis for that which basically mean same state. Now, this word was given in 1930s based on the machine model that our body is a machine and there is a same state to be maintained. And that's why we call it homeostasis. But then there has been a lot of understanding coming 
that our bodies are not like machines. They are very dynamic processes. They are the same, but they are changing also. So in between, there was a very popular term which came for a while, which makes some sense, and that's called allostasis, which means changed state. So homeostasis was the same state, which actually is never there. We never have the same state. Then came whether we have it changing state, allostasis. But we have the changing state, but we are also the same. Yeah. So I am changing, but I am also the same. But I am not the, exactly the same. That's where the word comes, homeodynamics. That we maintain the dynamics of life. And that is why we live. And that is the property of living systems. And our ability to live in a healthy manner, that ability is called also homeodynamic space. How much surviving ability I have. It's kind of a buffering capacity also. Of course, things can go wrong at any age. Yeah, when we are young, a child is born with a very small homeodynamic space. But then it grows up and homeodynamic space becomes bigger and bigger. But there is a danger zone. Things go wrong even with children yeah, due to many reasons. But normally, until the age 25 or so, we grow this homeodynamic space to become absolute youth. And this is the homeodynamic space which determines how our old age is going to be, how long we are going to live. So we need to learn how to maintain homeodynamic space. The zone around homeodynamics is the danger zone where things can go wrong. And that danger zone becomes more with age. And the reason is that all these defense mechanisms which were earlier protecting us and only allowing a small level of damage to accumulate cannot function properly. And more and more damage at the DNA level, protein level, cell level, tissue level, damage accumulation happens. And our homeodynamic space becomes smaller and smaller. On a day-to-day -day basis, we can live. But if something new happens, it is really problematic. So what is this homeodynamic space? I will explain it a little better next time.